Assalamu alaikum my brothers and my dear sisters I realised that the intro to the other video just cut off I'm really bad at editing but I'm trying to figure it out uh, So this is why I'm recording this small short intro I'm currently in Spain sitting on my sister's bedroom floor I did hold back a lot of the stories that I wanted to share um, But inshallah I'll have the opportunity to share those stories in the upcoming videos if I do decide to do that, because I did have a few things to say about a job interview that um, I attended. So I do look quite low on energy that day. I had work and then I had studies, so please do look past that. I hope you do enjoy the video that I'm about to show you. Uh, this is just a quick intro, so assalamu alaikum. I really do appreciate all of you who do comment on my videos and who do uh, watch throughout the whole video and give me feedback. Um, I really do appreciate every single one of you, whoever you are, brothers and sisters or people who are also thinking about accepting Islam. In the beginning, the way I, that I sort of approached my mother because actually I didn't talk to my parents together because they are divorced. So the way I started to introduce this to my parents was that uh, whenever we were together and they'd have a few comments about religion, I'd always bring up Islam in a way where I would defend Islam or I would say, don't you think that this is amazing? Don't you think that Muslim people are like this? Don't you think this is great? So I'd always try to have a positive insight or a positive comment about Islam when my parents, they were talking about religion and I asked them about Islam like um, like how about Islam like what well, why don't you think that's a plausible uh, you know religion that could be the, the correct religion and they both went against me of course they're like okay what is happening to you why do you keep talking about Islam I remember that my mom the first time she that I brought up Islam she sort of said she had a comment that I remember till this day and I don't remember any other comments I just remember this one so she said, oh, you must have a, a Muslim boyfriend now that you, that, you, uh, that you keep talking about Islam. And she didn't really say this directly to me. She sort of said it like laughing in a way to my dad. So I remember specifically that I was um, at the beach. So she decided to take off her shoes and just walk around along the beach. So that's it. And I was just sitting down, just looking at her from quite... A distance and it was quite a scene you know I everything was just felt like slow motion I was thinking in my head how am I gonna tell her I definitely can't look at her in the eyes and say hi mom I believe in Islam like no or like I believe that Islam is the true religion I cannot do this because I didn't have the courage then so this was before me taking my Shahada so you know I just I just thought I was going to tell her that this is the correct religion for me and that's it and I didn't know that anything like Shahad existed then so she came after like she was walking alongside the beach and then she came she approached me and she sat down and uh, I started asking her questions again like mom remember how I kept talking about Islam and then she's like yeah and I'm like well I I'm, I'm, I wasn't joking like I really do think that Islam is the true religion because I did a lot of research and I had this really like sweet voice, of course, towards my mom. I'm always like trying to be respectful. Um, so I was, but I had a specific type of like, like baby voice because I was really wanting to sound incredibly sweet towards my mom just to make her feel like, okay, you know, my daughter's being sweet, extra sweet to me. So let me listen to her, you know, and I don't know. I try to sound like I'm vulnerable basically. I told her like I reassured her like no 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 this has nothing to do with a man this has nothing to do with anyone influencing me like it's all me and uh, and I told her that I think that I believe that Islam might be the true religion and that I don't believe in what I used to believe I don't think that I've been doing things correctly and I felt so empty and depressed and now I feel like I finally like I might have found my way like if I carry on researching about Islam mom uh, this could be the route to my happiness so this is what I told her and she was so convinced that it was a guy because she just kept quiet and she said um, look if you want to revert because of love and um, <laughs> she just carried on talking about um, love me being me I just listened and I was like okay okay and I didn't bring it up again so that was that time at the beach 
and she said you know she's very upset and she's it, it breaks her heart to hear me talk about islam in this way but if if for some reason um i fell in love and i want to revert because of love she's like well at least you'll know that jesus christ is in your heart and um, the lord jesus christ is in your heart and then you can revert for love this is something this is what she said so i was thinking like okay so she still thinks that in my heart like i'm a christian so she thinks that i'm just reverting or i'm talking about this to try to bring up a man in my life so again i just left it and i was thinking job half done you know i sort of told her about islam fine so let me just uh leave that and we left that and then um during my my journey to to reverting so before reverting before taking my shahada i was always very suspicious i realized that now looking back i can tell that my parents probably thought i was very suspicious with my actions because i'd i'd start to close the door meaning we don't usually close the doors because we don't need to it's just me and my mom you know so there's no need to close the doors um, to our rooms we just say like hi mom like oh, do you need something you know we just shout at each other from room to room so I've never closed my door, but around this time I started to close my door because I was listening to you know YouTube recitations and I didn't want my mom to pass by and her hear something that she would consider horrendous. You know she would hear this and be like, what is this? What is this type of uh, noise? Um, like so I stopped eating meat. I wanted to start eating halal meat and all these things. So I started eating like a vegetarian at home and things changed, I was more quiet, I was more stressed out because I felt like I need to tell my parents because I feel kind of trapped in the house where I'm not able to express myself. Like I wasn't, like I was being fake to myself and I wanted to sort of tell them so that they could be aware. My dad would go to the congregation or like something to do with Messianic Jewish, um, Messianic Jewish community so I used to go with him but then you know I didn't want to do these things anymore and uh, I wanted to sort of tell them because again I don't hide things from my parents well let me say I don't hide things from my mom um, I was very suspicious as I said you know being in my room locked um, not locked sorry closing my door and being in my room and researching not getting out of my room I was researching researching because this is like a huge choice you know like if you're gonna change religion you want to know what you're going to change to so um, all that research that I'd done so far it was looking great and I was thinking like yeah this is the religion that I want to follow this is it you know check 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 and this depended on whether I was going to be happy or carry on being depressed and lost so once I got a grab uh, once I got a hold or a taste of Islam like knowing what it is I was isolating myself but looking at it now like looking back at it it it's not a bad thing like I remember I was very satisfied with everything and for a long time I didn't feel this happiness L let me compare it to something it's I mean it's nowhere near um, like the comparison I'm about to make but let's say you watch a series and it's your favorite series you know and you can't stop you just watch the next episode next episode and uh, and then you realize you know you've just spent your whole day watching this series for me this is how it felt you know I kept researching every day every day and it was like I was just investing my time in researching. This is why my parents didn't see me anymore. I didn't get out of my room. My parents started to question me like, why, like what, what's wrong with me? I seem off. Uh, when I say my parents, I mean my mom. So my mom did notice she's a mother. She knows um, something's wrong. So I remember the day I told her this was okay. So I took my shahada, everything happened. You know, I decided I, be you know, I became Muslim and then that was uh i don't know how long after taking my shahada i told my mom but i remember again it was at the dinner table and uh yeah we we were quiet a lot of the time again i think it was just because we were so distant at that time and i t I, I remember this is what i said to my mom so i it was really quiet and i was eating and i told her like mom i need to tell you something and she looked at me like oh no what now what did i do e even my reaction I was thinking like oh my gosh how do i tell her like i have to tell her now or else it's too much suspense and um and then i told her remember when i spoke too much about islam and stuff and then she's like yeah and i said well i sort of did something and it's a project 
So I said it's a project. I said I told her that this was a project in my life because it felt like a project. And I sort of wanted to say that to my mom so that she doesn't worry too much in a way where I'm like, Mom, I'm Muslim and you know this is a whole life changing situation and then she's gonna get scared and run away. I told her I didn't look her in the eyes. I was literally like looking at the fridge or just looking, you know, away from her. I I remember I was grabbing my face like, well I. Um, Shahada means that, you know, it's the process to become Muslim and I did it. Yeah, there was complete silence uh, because she, and I didn't wear the hijab then by the way, so of course I didn't wear the hijab I, until recently. So, um, so she was very, um, yeah, so just complete silence at the dinner table and she's like, what, you're Muslim? You, you did this, you did this project and you're Muslim now. Uh, why? Why? Like, uh, I don't understand why you would do such a thing to yourself. I just try to convince her to how it made me feel and how comparing, I was also comparing her to my life before and what's changed and <clears throat> how I feel how I feel about now that I'm Muslim and how I took the the shahada. You know, on my previous video, I I uh, I spoke about how I took my shahada. So I was telling her. Um, how I took the Shahada, which was on the phone with my Egyptian tutor. Again, my mum had, she was convinced that a man had had some type of uh, influence on this decision that I made. But like, what can I do now? Now you're Muslim. Now you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. But it's so unfortunate because, again, my words won't do justice to the amount of racism and discrimination and misinformation there is out there so I can't do justice to try to explain what was in my mum's mind I mean you see the media you see how much it influences people non-muslims and um, I can't blame my mum and at this point telling her like oh how can she have these thoughts because how can she not I mean do you see the way uh, Muslims are portrayed on the media like it's just devastating so my mom she said like um, this is so unfortunate you're going to regret it you're going to be hurt you're going to be abused um, you're going to be treated like slaves so all these things um, she had in her mind she was scared as a mother you know like what am I doing and um, I remember that uh, she probably had these thoughts as well because we watched the documentary this was like years ago we watched a documentary together where there was this uh, these three UK students, these girls, they were Muslim and they ran away and uh, they joined ISIS or something like this and it was all recorded on camera, them running away and they were so young, I think they were 15 or 16 years old. So she reminded me, similar story like telling me that oh I'm gonna run away and I'm going to join somewhere and I'm gonna be lost, they're gonna hurt me. You know she had these things in her mind at the dinner table after I told her that I'm Muslim. So she had a lot of worries. Couldn't, you know, there was no point in me defending like, oh no, mom, that's not what, I did tell her that's not what Muslim, uh, Islam, that's not what Islam teaches. Um, and uh, this this is not, this is not why I'm reverting. It's not because of a man. It's not because I'm going to join a group. So yeah, I remember my mom telling me like, um, you do know now you have to marry a Muslim man and you know how Muslim men are. Um, they're demanding, they're, they're abusive. Um, they're this, they're that, they're that, you know, just, she was just so worried about me because of what she knows or what she thinks she knows from the media, of course. Again, I can't stress enough that um, as a reaver, we need to be patient with our parents. We need to, you know, not necessarily follow what they follow, but to respect them no matter what. And this is something that was very difficult for me. So because I'm already used to staying quiet whenever my parents are trying to lecture me or discipline me in some way, for me it wasn't so difficult. But I know that in other help, um, I know that in other families that you know usually the the kids they can sort of treat their parents like best friends and you know then you sort of get used to raising your voice at your parents or something like this. But in my case, I had to just sit there and listen to a lot of these things, and. Of course, I also had the I, I got to say some things and and defend and defend my point as well, um, but you know it's just useless. It becomes useless. I told my mom, mom, we're not going to be, you know, I'm happy with what I chose. I just want you to know that I'm happy now. And 
I don't feel depressed, I don't feel sad. And I told her that it's very important to choose the religion that we feel like is correct and we need to research the religion. And I sort of told her this way so that, you know, indirectly telling her, like making sure that she's researched properly her own religion. So I did tell her briefly, like in a general way, I told her that, you know, as long as everyone has researched and they're satisfied 100% that the religion that they're following is the correct one, then, you know, they'll be happy, they will find satisfaction within their life. Because if I follow Christianity in order to, in order to satisfy my family, my parents, but then within my heart, I'm not feeling like this is the religion, then that's hurting myself. When the day of judgment comes, it's not just, you know, we're not going to be judged as a family, as a community, as neighbours, as friends, you know, it's going to be individual judging. So we will be judged individually. So this is why it matters. You need to be satisfied and content with what you're following. You need to research it. My family try to convince me every day um, that this isn't correct. But again, um, it's challenging. It's definitely challenging. Like sometimes I'm, I'm not, I'm, I would be lying if I ever said that. Not once did I think of, you know, having my old life back. But then what is the point? I was so sad then. I was so depressed. It's like... I have all these people judging me and criticizing me and what do I care most about, about the criticism or how I feel within myself. I'd rather be judged and criticized and, you know, bullied or whatever you call it. As long as in my heart I know that this is the correct religion, then it feels like there will, there will be struggles, there will be challenges, there will be, um, you know, heartbreaks. I felt like I experienced a lot of heartbreaks towards from family, from friends and after I reverted. I felt like I knew who was really there for me and who wasn't there for me. So, and again, that's life. You can't expect this world to be happiness, you know, you can't expect this world to make you happy 24 seven, you know, cause this is dunya, this is meant to be where the struggles happen, the str uh, challenges, you know, perfection and happiness is for uh, the, the afterlife, wherever you end up, that's the reward, Jannah. So now that I'm Muslim, I feel like people are dissatisfied with me. But before, when I was a Christian, I was dissatisfied with myself. But which one would I rather choose? Of course, I don't care what other people are thinking, what other people say towards me. As long as I'm satisfied and I'm content in, within myself, then I feel like that's what matters most. After uh, I had revealed to my mom that I took the Shahada, it was very difficult then because eventually the message the message reached to my father and yeah i think i think that's where it went so my mom basically told my dad to keep it quiet so that none of the other family members find out because i became sort of like a burden so it felt like it i was sh I, I brought shame to the family um, it sort of felt in that way because no one wanted me to reveal this and I wasn't wearing hijab then so like they could just see me and say you know she's she's uh, she's still a Christian my family who are Christians or Jewish messianic I feel like they would follow their religion unconditionally without having to research because it's sort of like it's in their blood or in their nature they feel like this is correct because it's been in our family for a very long time so this is why we must follow it but then it feels like they haven't really researched into it. That's how I feel like a lot of Christians that I know, um, they would say the same, like, we don't need to research it because, you know, we know it comes from our hearts. It's the feeling that it's correct. So I'm thinking, fair enough. I used to think the same way. So it was sort of like a feeling, but then I didn't research about it until I decided to. And I was like, mm, this isn't for me. I was asked, um, we were at a restaurant with my family and one of them asked me what is the point of you know going to the extreme to wear a hijab going to the extreme to pray five times a day go to this extreme to just only eat halal food like you know god wouldn't want you to be so restricted on yourself when so taking the shahada that was one thing for my mom it was very difficult to for her to know that okay i'm muslim because i took the vows basically and i I became Muslim 
it was very difficult for her but I think that was nothing compared to when I started wearing hijab because I remember that when I took my shahada and I told her about it she would always tell me like okay it's fine as long as you don't tell anyone like you follow whatever you want to follow as long as you don't um expose yourself um you don't need to wear the hijab you're not gonna wear the hijab right and I would tell her like uh I don't know yet and then she she would say like you don't need to wear it that's just too extreme like you can be a Muslim but don't wear the hijab so she just told me don't wear the hijab because that would kill her that's what she basically said like wearing the hijab it would kill her and uh, of course I don't want to you know hurt my family I didn't want to I didn't want them to be disappointed of me like that's the last thing you want to do is disappoint people around you because first of all there's consequences after that when you hurt the people around you they start to distance themselves and that's exactly what happened i wore the hijab and i remember that i didn't wear it in this way because this way my parents um they don't like me wearing it in this way because they think it's extreme so this is like wrapping it twice my mom um she liked me wearing the sports hijab which is just like the cap and then i wore i would wear a hood on top um, I had to try to find a way where she would accept it and where it wouldn't look intimidating. So this is why I started to wear the the sports cap with my hood on and she was a bit fine with it. Actually, it was for like a whole three months where my mom didn't want to go into public with me. So I had to like go out on my own. I'd try to find a meet up with her because that's what we always did. We always used to go out shopping, grocery shopping. Um, I'd meet her up at her office. Um, you know we'd go out a lot like mother and daughter but after i you know wore the hijab my mom was very upset she was heartbroken she had uh, said that you know it felt like she lost a daughter and you know because it was weird seeing me like this so you know it was understandable i then bought myself uh, a scarf and i felt like i didn't like the sports the sports one it was just not my preference not aesthetically like I didn't care about the appearance wise but it just felt like it would fall off a lot um, and it would just like show my hair either way so it felt like it was uncomfortable but this feels more secure so yeah so after I decided to put on the scarf she you know we she just completely um, avoided me at all costs um, and it was very hard for her to understand and it was hard for her to look at me with a hijab because I remember that when I'd speak to my parents and I'd look at them in the eyes they would always look away because they couldn't look at me like with a hijab like at all like you know they would be talking and they would be like like really <laughs> avoiding eye contact I'd say it's much better alhamdulillah everything is much better another challenge is that when family members start to interrogate you and as a Reva I am not qualified enough to teach people about Islam you know I do not keep so much information that I study it's like I study it and I research and I'm like yes that's correct but if you were to tell me recite this this and that where did you get that source I will not remember the names and all this so it's like my parents when they were or my family members when they would interrogate me I was sort of like uh, uh, I wouldn't know what to say to them you know I would be put on the spot like why do you do this but what does it say like what source does it say um, I think one of the most hurtful things is that when you have such respect for the stories of the prophets and for example when you have so much respect for prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and then someone speaks against him because they don't know much about um, the stories of the prophets and all these things it hurts because it's like you respect someone so much you know so much about them you read so much about them and then to have them involved in a sentence where it's accusing them of things that is not true and it's like putting fuel to the fire so there is no point in me trying to defend something and you know just create more problems but as a reva i feel like that that's a difficult thing to to see it's my family not trying or not not towards me i don't i think that's that's a struggle but it's inevitable so it feels like the most hurtful thing as a reva is seeing your parents believing something else when you know that they should you know try to research about islam again i keep mentioning this but it's very important to have patience with your parents to have patience with those who um 
are being misled or for those who are disbelievers we have to try to respect them the same way we want that courtesy upon us us as reverts um, I think we should grant them the same courtesy and respect them I wanted to talk about a lot of topics within this video about telling my friends and family that I reverted I have a few stories about a job interview that I did oh, I really did want to speak about more and I feel like I've just been blabbering about the same topics um, I'm quite tired the sun is setting and yes I think I've been speaking for 50 minutes which I have to completely um, cut out also I wanted to mention again because I was so shocked to see so many subscribers and so many likes and comments on the previous video and to me it's so heartwarming to see so much supporters amongst you guys as well a lot of you are advising me a lot of you are sending links to help me I feel incredibly lucky to have such a lovely Muslim community online now and uh, watching my youtube videos and helping me out and helping each other out and just commenting and yes it's um, beautiful when I see comments as well and uh, I'm reading them whenever I can there's just so many comments so I don't know if I did read all of them but it's uh, so beautiful especially when I see some Muslim sisters as well because there's very few Muslim sisters that comment um, but I know you're watching because I did get a few um, Muslim sisters who also reached out to me so I know that um, you're watching so you know feel free to comment or to um, you know send feedback on the comments and it's definitely very very truly amazing for me to see so much support so thank you and and um, inshallah everyone is benefiting from my videos in some way uh, reverts as well check back on the previous videos if it helps out and um, keep keep looking at other videos of reverts because I know there's so many revert videos out there that can help you and uh, you know just keep clicking and clicking away that's how I found out that Islam was the the religion that I wanted to to follow because I went from one video to the other to the other and then YouTube eventually filtered a bunch of things and algorithms started to um, prioritize Islam faith and all these things also for my videos I do keep in mind that eventually my parents will watch my videos so I'm always trying my best to um, not expose certain members of my family because I do not want to do this because again this is the internet this is online so anyone can watch it so I always keep in mind that my friends will watch this my parents will watch this and my neighbors will watch this so this is why I can be a bit brief in on certain topics or subjects uh, that include family members so again I'm really sorry if anything has offended anyone um, this is just my story about my family everyone's story is different so until the next video will be out I have no idea when I don't know what the topic will be but uh, inshallah I will uh, figure it out and then um, upload rather than going through my own um, notes and picking out a topic i rather know what you guys want to listen to what you guys want to know about me what you guys want to know about being a revert what you know specific anything really uh thank you very much um everyone has been very kind to me and i hope it remains in this way um inshallah i hope it really does remain this way so assalamu alaikum bye bye everyone